Hey everybody, Captain Jack here with another Tech It Light nuclear power tutorial video. I've got my hazmat suit on and a scuba helmet for whatever reason, I'm not sure, it just looks cool. Um, today, this is a, and we're going to go over a follow up video of the video that I already posted that showed us all the different elements that you could add into your reactor, what they did. Um, I've learned a lot since that video and not everything in there is actually accurate from what I found out but again as I stated before in the other video I'm learning trying to figure out the best setup and this is what I've come up with so let's take a look at it and hope you like it what we have here is four different six chamber nuclear reactors they're hooked up to these green things called industrial information panels and you can attach these with a signal from this uh, remote sensor kit. You can hook them up to your reactors and it'll give you all kinds of information, how hot it is, how much heat you can take, uh, input or the output of power, and the time remaining in the cycle. Well, let's take a look at the inside of this thing here. Uh, this is completely different than my earlier setups. We just have tons of overclocked heat vents, bunch of heat capacity reactor plating, and two separate lines of quad uranium cells and these are all exactly the same there's another one back there I can't click on from here um, and basically what's happening is we're just trying to get rid of heat as fast as possible and I figured out the best way to do that is just with a ton of vents um, this reactor plating is in here so the reactor doesn't heat up and explode too quickly because this setup here just generates tons and tons of heat you can't run it for more than about 40 seconds before it nukes your server um, so this is what I got. They're all set up exactly the same. I have heat capacity reactor plating. I have overclocked heat vents and quad uranium cells. If you watch here, these are all deteriorating fairly quickly. And they continue to deteriorate even after the reactor's off. They'll slowly get their uh, heat back. What I have here is a logic circuit setup. These are two state cells hooked up with red wire, and this is an AND gate. Now what this what this does is it send a, sends a signal to the reactor to stay on for 10 seconds and then stay off for 20 seconds. And when this thing hits here, the signal reroutes itself back to the on position, and it goes in an infinite cycle. Uh, these little things here are just covers so that I can make the wire design a little bit more compact. I have a switch here that I can use to manually turn this whole setup on and off so I can force it off and this thing will continue to go. And if for whatever reason I need to work on this, change something in it, I can force it off with this here and that's why we have the AND gate. So we got the setup. It's cooling, cooling down right now. It's going to heat up and as we can see from these green monitors here we're putting out an EU per tick of 720 and that's times four so we're getting a lot of energy from these things even though they're only staying on for a couple of seconds so how much energy is this thing actually producing and how safe it is it we have an MFSU right here and it's currently at power level of 10 million um, I just have these, these are high voltage transformers back here because I'm deathly afraid of blowing something up. I'm not sure if I need those or not. Um, you can see the fourth reactor, it's kind of set back in here and the front chamber peeks out through the front. That's how that red wire signal pulses every single reactor. And back here we have mass fabricators. Now there's 19 mass fabricators fixed, hooked up to this thing which is a lot more than I ever thought it could do and I'm not really sure why this works but it seems to work fine um, if I turn on that tower of mass fabricators it's gonna start draining this once the reactor turns off it gets in its 20 cycle dormant stage there we go it's starting to drain power um, it's draining power pretty quickly and we're just going to wait here for a second and watch when the reactor kick starts itself again. And we're going to see how fast this thing is versus the mass fabs. Uh, 
And there we go. It gets about 9,800,000. And it fills up again in seconds, basically. It's pr producing over 300,000 EU about every three seconds or 100,000 a second. All these are working. They're full of scrap. They're making UU matter. And uh, I'm not sure how this works, but it's working. And this thing is a beast. It's pumping out tons of power. It can also do something else interesting. In Tech at Light, you can use EU, convert it to MJ, and run your Buildcraft machines with it. So if I flip this switch, we're going to power this oil refinery here with an adjustable electric engine. And I found out that 170 MJ per tick is the least you can give this thing to power an oil refinery 100%. And as you can see, we're using nuclear power to run an oil rig here. And so that's making fuel coming from over there. And we're uh, keeping this little village safe, even though we have this huge setup here. This thing does light on fire occasionally. Um, I'm pretty sure that's okay. Uh, this left one seems to steam and smoke a little bit more. Sometimes the top chamber catches fire, but it always cools back down. I've had this thing running for over an hour now. It hasn't exploded on me. It's perfectly safe, and I can actually expand this basically as much as I want. I can continue to add reactors to it. All they have to do is just extend the redstone signal to turn them on and off, and that's what I have here. So we got a 10 second on, 20 second off. We have a manual override to turn the reactor on and off. And we have a huge setup that is producing tons of power, more than probably I could ever use. And we got lots of mass fabricators making lots of UU matter, which we'll definitely need for a Tech at Light setup. Um, hope you guys like what you see here. I'm going to continue to work on nuclear power and hopefully refine the setup a little bit more. I did figure out that if you add an additional quad uranium cell to the tops and bottoms of both of those both of these strings here you can crank that thing up to about an output of 1128 EU per tick that the problem is you can only run it for about two seconds before the thing blows up in your face um, so this is an updated video of my progress I hope this logic circuit helps here this was uh, developed by Ingram so props to him this is Captain Jack from the Minecrafters signing out. Make sure you visit our website at theminecrafters.com. Thanks for watching.